Hey everyone, it's Jonathan Stevens here, and today I'm excited to share some updates from Polycam. That's right, they have an update to their Gaussian Splat Viewer, where you can now edit your Gaussian Splats, do measurements, and even create a video. So I'm gonna jump into my desktop and we're gonna check out all the new updates and see what it's all about. If you log into your Polycam account, you now see that it says edit, crop, and make videos of your splats with the new splat editor. So let's dive in and see what that's about. Uh, if I'm gonna check out this uh, splat that I made a couple of days ago from some drone footage in Florence, Italy of this cathedral. I thought it turned out spectacular and this would be a good one to show some of the updates that came out. Um, so as I'm looking at this, one thing that always strikes me with Polycam and Luma and all these is just the quality that you get from using a, a web-based tool. I just drag and dropped, it was a, like a 23 second video into the interface. It took probably 30 minutes. The, the time it took me to do some emails and uh, did a couple other tasks at work and then checked in and noticed it was already done. So not a lot of processing time to run this. Um, so this is really detailed. The first thing I wanted to look at was actually the background. So now you can like assign a background color as opposed to just like black or white. So like right now I have it as black. And if I change it to white, you can see in the, in the distance where I, I didn't have splats, you know, if I pull over here, you can see that, that color change. Uh, one little hack I found is if you can find a color like you can get your own colors going here and you can you can kind of find one that looks already like the sky you have like so and try to match it and you can kind of hide areas where there might be a gap so that looks kind of cl close we're gonna hit save and see what it see what it does um it's not quite there i did i think it's this one of these colors i had i had one uh, uh, uh an easy way to hide that color and get that to kind of like match is to use like a, a free color picking tool where you can, you know, you can take a snapshot of your screen like so, and then you should be able to say so this color picking tool. So I'm going to pick one of these colors. So I'm like, ah, oh, that's, that's a good representative. I'm going to take that hex color code and close it I'm going to add it in and just toss that in. All right. I was close to what I was looking at already. Hit save. And now look, now it's it's pretty darn close. If people aren't looking, you're just moving around. You don't notice there's those gaps. So that's a nice little feature that they added. Um, I can see where it could be nice if you're doing like an animation and you, as we crop in on the scene, that might be a, a, a good little feature. Um, so that's cool. Um, the next thing I look at is measure. So I think measure is probably one of the most interesting things they added to this because um gosh and splats aren't meshes so what are they measuring on i don't know no it i mean it doesn't tell us are they measuring on like points the gaussian points is it is there an invisible mesh layer they had processed in the background they could have um but let, let me just let me try the ruler so i have no idea how big this stuff is but i'm i'm guessing this is at least you know like 10 20 meters across but it says two and three quarters inches. Um, I don't see the pop-up right now. There was a pop-up the first time I jumped in here and it said that the scaling might not be correct if you're not using, if you're using photo mode. And so that, that was my guess. There was no scale when I input a, a video, but look, it like attaches pretty well to the front. Let me try a couple, let me try a couple of their measurements here. So let's go from here to here and again, they'll be off and yeah, like it. Okay. So it doesn't get like exactly on the front. It looks like it goes in a little bit, but it's a good rough measurement tool. And then I can do, I can do other things like a pen. I'm guessing that's like me want to do like different shapes you get all a bunch of different measurements or an area. So like, let's say I want the area of this kind of window thing here like so and then i can always adjust these little dots by dragging them so that's cool so now i got these kind of measurements but they're all off um one thing i could do let's say i did know the distance like from here to here and since this is france let's make this over here you can toggle it to meters so now it's meters uh it's not 0.7 meters across 
you can rescale it. So rescale. So let's just say we think that's 10 meters across. Hit rescale. And now it's going to rescale everything. So that's probably a lot more realistic. And now all your measurements have adjusted accordingly. Um, so that's cool. So now I'm starting to get some better, some better data. And I do notice it's like hard to know where the centroid of the big dot is that we're clicking on. Um, but it is interesting because this is starting to put us more in that like GIS world of measurement. Um, all right. So, and, and when I, I can delete and I can change things, but when I'm done, if I just exit out, oh, when I grab out of all that, it all just goes away. And so I can go back and look at my model. Um, what else we got? We have crop. Um, so crops kind of an interesting tool. It does kind of a basic crop. So let me just kind of grab this. I can rotate it and I can make it like a cylinder or a square. Let's just, I think, I think cylinder might be kind of cool for this one. We can center it on our object. You can bring up, you got all these little controls. You can bring up the base. Like so we don't want to make sure we want to make sure we don't cleave off this top. And then we can hit uh, there's crop in or crop out. So we want to do like a reverse crop. I'm going to apply that. And there we go. And so now it's, it's cropped. Exit out. So now I got this kind of like sub, sub uh, POI, which is really, really cool. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the, the, the gist of it. There is this uh, rescale tool as well. Um, Again, it's just that measurement rescale, which I already showed you guys. So I think that's quite interesting what they've added here. Um, and now you see I've kind of like matched the color of the sky. There is some splats hanging over the top. They, they did post that they will be pushing an update that will make it faster to train. And you will be get there'll be less of these floaters. So it'll be interesting to see where, where that goes. But uh, that's just quick. So while that, that's cool, I want to show you just another example. So I'm going to discard my changes and I'm going to show you where the crop tool could be, could be really cool. So I got this scene that actually Polycam provided me a while back for kind of like testing. And let's say I just wanted to crop down this guy, Goku, I think is his name. Um, yeah, from Dragon Ball Z. Uh, I can hit the crop button and... Um, this is where I do see some hard parts about cropping is that like your controls can get hidden in these 360 mesh, uh, 360 Gaussians. Like I, I can't see the sides very well and you kind of have to like hunt for them. But if I see like this guy's kind of hidden, I can't find that control. So sometimes you got to like move it around more than you want. Uh, so it's, it's the user experience probably could be improved a little bit over time um but i mean it's not too bad to do with so like yeah here i'm trying to get a like a fine crop on them and it's just hard to see those pull in and out controls like so um it probably just takes some some getting used to it. there's another hidden one I just know it was there so all right let's see where we're at okay so i need to obviously bring the bottom up <laughs> where is that bottom it's in the scene like, so I want to bring that bottom up more. How do I, this where it gets tough. How do you bring things up without seeing it? And top down. It's looking way better. Uh, I'm glad thing I didn't crop it. So there we go. I do like that they picked these colors, like purple, these bright green. You're not going to see those colors in real life. So those should pretty well stand out. Um, okay, so now I got the guy. I'm happy with that. I want to make sure I didn't cut off his staff. Now I'm going to hit apply. Um, and there we go. Let me just X out that. And so now you got this, this cool, this cool cropped version of them. And I think that's really awesome. And just like the, again, look at the details on this stuff. Um, really detailed when you get a 360 shot. Uh, and this could be cool. I, I mean, I, this might be what you want to make an animation of instead of like a full scene or full city. So maybe you could do some kind of like fly around of a product. I don't know. It's up to you. But uh, I think that works really well. So the last thing I, I didn't point out, which I think is interesting what they did. And uh, now I'm going to discard those edits as well. Is But this is uh, 
make videos with your splats. And so when I first went to record this yesterday, when they first announced it, I, I couldn't figure out how to make recording. You know, I, I jumped into all of these and there was no recording button, no visual. And that's when um, the founder founder of uh, Polycam had messaged out, just said, hey, uh, this right now it's only in the iOS app, which which is cool, but it's coming to the desktop. So uh, as expected, you know, you just want to launch it somewhere first and then start getting it. Now I'm going to show you the my phone and show you a recording of that. And you can see what that process looks like where I make an animation and you can see what that looks like as well. OK, so now I'm on my iPhone and I'm going to pick that Goku guy again and I'm going to show you how to make an animation on this. So it's it's loading and I have like the two fingers to to kind of move around and and turn and then you can make an orbit. There's a custom path. Um, there's the orbit right there. As you can tell, it doesn't really work unless all you have is just what you want to orbit. Uh, and so um, I noticed that like once you pick that mode, it can be hard to get back in. So the easiest thing you can do is just exit back out and back in. OK, so now now I'm back in the model. And this time I'm going to do a, a, like a custom animation. So all you do is, is you you basically hit the, you know, create a new keyframe. You hit the add button and you move around. This should be like Loom AI or any of these other kind of like spline editors where you you just have this easy animation path. Um, and I'm going to kind of do like a spiral out on this specific scene like so. Um, and I do find sometimes it's a little wonky to orient myself. OK, so now I'm just going to add a couple more keyframes and kind of spiral out like so. And, and you can start to see those that camera animation path and in my 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 camera spot spots there that is going to keep the frame through. And then when it's done, I, I hit save. And at this point, I thought my phone had had froze. I, th you know, I thought it was like, bam, instant save. But no, you actually have to be a, a little patient, which is fine. I think it's rendering the video on the server. But um, I did do this with a different scene. And the first time I thought I, ha I had crashed my phone. I'm like, uh oh. And so I exited out and I found out that it was just it was just waiting. So here you go. Here's the result. And you can see this quick spiral out. Uh, that wasn't the smoothest. But to be honest, I have actually done this on a couple others and got really smooth animations. I think this was just the lack of number of keyframes and the way I'd moved around. Uh, so then I can also share this out. Uh, so I'll show on the screen the final result so you can get an idea of what that looks like. OK, well, there you have it. There's the big updates to the Gaussian splatting from Polycam. Uh, I made this video just because I thought people should see, like, what's your options? And most people I see are using Luma AI today, and that's great. That's a great app as well. Um, I, I personally use Nerf Studio a lot, and I, I use them all just to evaluate. But uh, this is interesting because now I feel like the feature sets within the different apps are kind of reaching some parity, except for I, I don't think you can do the cropping and things like that in Luma AI. What I would like to see is the ability to like selectively crop out little portions or little floaters from your scene like you can do in Super Splat or one of those other um, desktop editing tools for splats. But um, tell me what you think about these updates. Does this make you want to use Polycam more than you would use Luma AI or some desktop tool? Uh, the one thing they have in Polycam you're not seeing that in this review was that they can do 3D models from, from the mesh modes, straight from an iPhone, and you can also do room scans and have all your 3D data in one place, which is really nice. And Luma AI does not do kind of mesh scans to the same quality. So there you have it. Tell me what you think. Subscribe to this channel if you really like this sort of content. I think I'll do more of these reviews because people just don't even know, like, should I use one or the other? And if you find this helpful, yeah, that'd be very helpful. Leave a comment and subscribe. So I'll see you guys in the next video.